Mr. Benick here, helping students with the control expressions worksheet number four. Notice that all these variables are equal to the given values throughout the whole worksheet. They're poor variable names. I would never accept this in a project, like a variable named A. You should have a variable named like price of something, or total cost, or sales tax. But for a worksheet, I'm going to live with this. So you could go through the worksheet if you wanted to right now, and everywhere that you saw the A, you could plug in a 2. And maybe you want to do that as you go rather than just up front, like I'm doing right now. D is 6. Yeah, I'll do that later as I do each exercise. Let's do number 1 first because it looks easy. 16% symbol 2 really means mod, modulus. It means what is the remainder of 16 divided by 2? That's what that is asking. Well, when you do that, you get no remainder. See, zero remainder down here. So this simplifies to zero, and we're asking, is zero equal to zero? Yeah, true. So number one's true. Oh, by the way, any time that you have a, an even number, you'll always get zero when you mod it by two. When you do percent symbol two, it always works out to be zero. Try it out, but all even numbers are so continuing on with another hard question, like say number, these are all easy. What am I saying? Oh, uh, they're all like mod. Oh, let's look at number four. M, which is 23, we're, we are checking to see if 23 mod two is equal to one. We'll do 23 divided by two and find the remainder. Well, the remainder of that is, let me check. I'm doing my division, my long division. Subtracting, the remainder is 1. So that means that the left-hand side here of number 4 simplifies to the number 1. Well, what do you know? 1 is equal to 1. So it's true. In other words, that proves that 23 is an odd number, whereas exercise 1 proves that 16 is an even number. Because even numbers always have a remainder of zero, and odd numbers always have a remainder of one when they're modulus modded by two. It's a pattern that works, and you may or may not care to know in the future, but that's a cool trick that computers like to know. Okay, moving down to uh, one that looks different, like number nine. You have two variables in number nine, G and B. 15 and 3 need to be plugged in. So 15 and 3. Now for once we're not doing mod 2. We're taking 15 and we're doing long division with 3. What's the remainder of that? Some people can do that in their, their head. I'm checking my work. Yes, the remainder is 0. So is 0 equal to 0 is what number 9 could be rewritten as. Heck yeah, that's true. Well that proves that 15 is evenly divisible by 3. Anytime you have a big number, mod a little number, and you get 0, that means that that big number is evenly divisible by the little number. This trick is used in a lot of apps and certainly a lot of games. So if you learn tricks like this, even though they're a little bit of math, you can go places in certain types of computer science. If you're better with words, maybe you could make like a chatbot and you don't, there is no math involved. Like Siri. Siri doesn't know math, not really. And moving on, uh, number 13 and 14, read my lecture notes, but good luck with that. They're down here at the bottom because they're the tricky ones. Number 13 proves that 11 is prime. The variable 11, if all of this works out to be true, that proves that 11 is prime. Number 10, 10 is really 2 times 5 with a factor tree. That shows me that 10 is called a composite number. It's not a prime number. So number 14 proves that, four, that, that 10 is not prime. I think it works out to false. But you can double check it for homework. Have a great day.